Welcome to a Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast. It's a very professionally produced a Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast. Well lit, well miked, no. well rehearsed, well scripted. I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans, and this told. is my husband and podcast co-host, Alan Evans. A train in the house. And we are back for another man. I don't know how we're going to get it all crammed into this episode, but we're going to ma- uh, manage somehow. We had so much happen since the last podcast we cannot wait to get to. We are going to get behind it and just pack it the best we can. Mm. Full. Just, uh, uh, yeah, 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 babe. Put it in there. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's what we're going to do. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I, don't, I just want to like just get started. Oh, because we've had, this is going to be a good one, guys. And let me start out by saying... You are going to have, Kelly, you won't, I I will not, but you, good, strong, dear, sweet, clean listener, are going to have a backache after picking up all the dimes that Kelly's going to drop in this podcast. Me? Yes. You're not going to drop dimes? You, You just want to sit back and let me do all the dime dropping? Let's let the listener decide who is going to drop more dimes on this podcast. I have a few to drop. I'm going to drop a few dimes because, you know what? I hung with Steve and Philip a, a little bit this uh you this can't yeah. be calling him Philip. That's what his can't. wife calls him. That's what his wife calls him. I know. I on the group text of my family group text, I I was of course dropping dimes and sending pictures and I said, So should I call him uh Dr. Phil or Philip? And there was that. Is that a cricket sound effect? Because you know I cannot hear them. And then my dad finally piped in. He's like, I would stick with Dr. Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's so. seeing the humor in the Philip. No, nobody would see the humor in the So that. yeah, we will get to that. We'll get to my jury duty, my civic duty of showing up for jury duty. And I really think that about covers this whole podcast. <laughs> no, I've got There's a little more. bonus content. There's more. I bonus content. It's not an ad, but I'm going to talk about a wacky new place that I took the boys, a uh, fast food place. And you can only find these in select places in the United States. And it was it was fun. It was a little adventure. So we'll maybe we'll finish with that. It was a fun, fun enough adventure to where I feel like I, I need to share it because the boys thought it was pretty cool. And it had to do with EK in a way, too. We borrowed her car. So we'll get into well, that. Well, you were doing something nice for her, and I appreciate we'll that. We'll get into that. I feel like there was stuff that happened before, because this all happened within the last two days, and I feel like there was probably stuff that happened before that, but it's all just, oh, Easter. Easter happened. I was like, what happened before that? We had Easter as well. It's kind of a big one to forget. That is a big one, but we had so much happen since Easter, that's why it's just like, my head's still spinning, but... Anyway, hopefully everybody did have a, have a great Easter. I'll be honest, Alan and I, we have not been r- having our butts parked in the pew on a regular basis. So there was a temptation, you know, on Sunday morning. It's like, well, do we... And I feel like we should go to church, not just on Easter and Christmas, but we need to be going more often. But we went to um, one of the mega churches nearby our house. Mm-hmm. And we went to Prestonwood Baptist Church, if anybody's familiar. Kelly and Alex. Hey, Kelly. Well, that's Pastor Sam. I love you guys. Oh, you're losing it. Well. <laughs> it's been a long time since you heard him speak. Yeah, it's been a long I like my wine. Yeah. Well, that's not Pastor Sam oh. preaching at Preston when it's Jack Graham. Oh, yes. Jack Graham, Pastor Sam. I was a little confused. But yes. Yeah, yes, but yes. the thing about Prestonwood Baptist Church, if you've never been, it's a mega church, like I said. And uh, the choir, the music is just I, I cry every time. The music was so good. The music washes over you. And ever since then, Alan, um, you know, he has Sirius also. When he, you, you know how when you get a new car, you get like Sirius radio for like three months or whatever, hoping they hook you. They can't hook Kelly Raspberry. I'm not paying extra. But Alan got it in his um, vehicles, and he found out he could put it in mine. Yeah. So I found I have been listening to a lot of worship music. Oh, good! I'm glad you're using Sirius. it. That's it's awesome. Really, you know, I'm glad it's been really it. good for my spirit. Good. Man. I don't need to be listening to stuff about twerking and booty smacking all the time. You know, it's just been really good for my. You're not spirit. in with the WAP. It's been very good for my spirit. You're not on the WAP. Oh, I would not. No, I, I don't. I don't do whopping. What is whopping? At all. It's not good. But um, so there's that, <clears throat> and that was Easter, and then we went over to. Um, Alan's sister's house, and mm-hmm. we had a lovely spread. I made my mama's macaroni and cheese, and it was a big 
mm. bust because it was I not changed. A bust. It, it was, was good. Not good. Kel- no, Kelly is underselling. I changed the recipe. It was good. My fault. It just needed a little more salt. It needed a lot more salt and a lot more flavor. It was like eating flavorless mush. It was not good. But the cherry cobbler was very good. You didn't have any. You stuck with pecan pie. I ate about half a pecan pie. My sister had All by yourself. It. Why you got to... I'm just saying. Why you got to throw me in Well, you said I ate about a half a pecan pie, which I was reiterating, reiterating, yes, all by yourself. Uh, my sister ordered a ham from uh, Cracker Barrel. And all the fixins. All the fix, Juicy. Good. Very good. Very good. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. She well, said, well, I'm ordering ham from Cracker Barrel. I'm like, oh, okay. But she also got dressing and beans and rolls and everything. It was good. And when you get it from Cracker Barrel, it's in this big box, hashtag not an ad. And then they give you instructions on how to reheat everything. So she did a great job because I would probably screw that up just like I did the macaroni and cheese. So my sister wanted a picture of the ham. Did I show you this? Well, you, you took it. We'd already messed it up before, right. but you took it unbeknownst to her, and it wasn't posed pretty. So the ham was like, you know, most of the time you'll see a ham, and it's on its side. Yeah. So you see the meat, you know, in the little round the, bone. The beautiful spiral cut. Right. So I guess I was confused. JD, my brother-in-law, Amanda's husband, he got the ham out of the packaging and set it, like, face down. So it looked like a big dome, like a... I don't, it was very, it's and that's kind of, the picture you took. kind of making me uncomfortable. It was, it was strange looking. It was like a ham dump. <laughs> right. So I took, I just took a picture of it, you know, and I sent it to my sister. <laughs> so my sister, she's like, uh, yeah, this looks like one of your old selfies I remember. And I'm like, which one? She's like the one where you look like Jabba the Hutt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So she drew on this picture, she drew little eyes and glasses. Was she right? And put it next to me. I, we'll post this for our good, strong, sweet, dear, clean listeners. you love sending a job of the hut selfie. Yes, our wacky marketing department will get on that. But yes, it, it the ham with the glasses on it looked just like me. There you go. Brown. There you go. Big neck. Overdone. Glasses. <laughs> Facial hair. I oh, don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, so there's that. I did the Easter egg hunt like I do for the kids, where I, you know, a few of the eggs have cash. It was very interesting to watch Dylan and our youngest niece, Beatrice, bartering and trading and um, offering cash for Snickers and trading, uh, what what was it? I don't remember. Starburst and all this stuff. It was kind of fun. Yeah, Dylan and uh, Beatrice, my, my younger niece, they had deals going. Yeah, wheeling and dealing. They were wheeling and dealing. It was a good time. But then Dill, he he tries to wheel and deal with me. He's like he's like, Daddy, I got I got a deal, and I'm like, Okay, you can give it to me, bud. What you got? He goes, I'll give you eight dollars, but you give me ten. Oh, what a deal! And I'm he's like, a good negotiator. Yeah, and I was like, Well, <laughs> bud, I typically I, I wouldn't, you know. Give, Make that deal. Give more than I'm taking in on a deal like this. Mm-hmm. But why don't I just give you two dollars? He's like, Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, Okay, <laughs> whatever. Well, Dylan yeah. always walks away a winner, right? So that was Easter Sunday, and then I got to sleep in just a tad bit on Monday morning because I had to report for jury duty. Now, to be at the Kid Craddock Morning Show, my day starts at 6 a.m., but for jury duty, I had to report at 8.30 a.m., so I got, like I said, I got to sleep in just a little bit. Collin County Courthouse. Collin County Courthouse. I spent a lot of time there. I'm sure you did. I did, too, actually. Going through my legal name change, I was up there a lot because Mm. I kept messing up the paperwork. Mm. Anyway, so I report for jury duty, and I, I know you're going to court, and you want to look... In, in my opinion, presentable. You're going to be in a courtroom. We get the little card saying, you know, no tank tops, no, you know, they want you to be respectful, no cut off shorts and things like that. So I, sh- I put on, I chose a shirt dress, sans a belt, because I ate a lot on Easter Sunday and I felt more comfortable. Some sensible flats with a little closed toe, like a, a ballet flat, if you will, almost. Wait a minute. Hmm. Did your stylist do this, or did you? No, do I did this? this on my own. People keep asking now. Everything you wear, they want to know if the stylist picked it no, up. No, no, that was that was all Kelly Raspberry Evans um, going to the courthouse. But I was complimented. The lady that was seated next to me, Whoops. 
in my jury pool said she loved my outfit. I said, thank you very much. And as I was leaving, a random stranger told me I was gorgeous. And I said, you just made my day. I'm going to start doing more random compliments like that. Who anyway, is this random stranger? Just some woman walking out. She just said, you are gorgeous. It's a woman, huh? I'm like, what, what does it matter? I just... That was a little humble brag that somebody thought I was gorgeous, right? Hey, anyway. hey, hey, let's start keeping track, guys. Good, strong, sweet, dear, clean listener. Get your little uh, notepads out. I'm going to give you a second. Get your writing instrument out. I'm going to give you a second. Make a tick mark. That is dime number one. Why is that a dime? Why is that a dime? Humble brag. It's a dime. Well, no, I, dropping a well dime, I was at the courthouse and said, ooh, look dropping how gorgeous a, you are. Dropping a dime is humble not brag. the same as humble brag. Humble brag. That's two different things, though. They're nuanced differences. They're very different. Anyway, Define the matter. differences. I was just trying to say I was dressed decent. Please define the differences. And I put on some makeup. And I, like, washed my hair and did all those things. You can't believe how people show up to the courthouse. What, give us some. Who, who, what do they look like? There were people in flip-flops yeah. with corns. It's you like, do. right. It's like one thing if you like got pretty feet. But number two, why are you wearing flip-flops to the courthouse? I just thought that was disrespectful. Did they have like the Dr. Scholl's no, corn no, pad no, on it? No, just corn shining. And then there were people Gross. that literally looked like maybe they were right in the middle of cleaning out their garage and looked at their watch and like, oh, got to get to the courthouse and just came up there. I'm like, what are y'all, what, what is happening? And then, you know, I will say the majority of people were dressed fine, right? Fine. But anyway, that I digress. So we, um, you have to sit through, if you haven't been for jury duty, I'm assuming it's like this. I remember in Dallas when I went, I was in Dallas County, we had to watch a little video. They showed saying, a, oh, I'm sorry, babe. When I was up at this one for jury duty, they showed a video. Yeah, they, I don't know how often. One? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. A, a, it was very... They really try to entertain you because they know nobody wants to be there. And they know it. And there's a video where they intersperse all these, you know, court scenes from Jim Carrey and The Liar and, you know, any any courtroom drama, L.A. Law, whatever. And they're, they're, the, the judges, there are more female judges in Collin County than there are male judges, which is really unusual, especially since one of the judges remind us women didn't even have a right to serve on the jury as recent as like 1950-something, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. And so these two female judges in their robes and everything go, whoop, whoop, Yeah, holla, I remember whoop, that whoop. bit. I'm like, I remember that what bit. is happening? They yeah, did a bit. Yeah. They were doing bits. So anyway, after that, they come up and they go through um, making sure everybody is, is present, and there's a, a lot of us. So then um, they divide. There's like 300, 400 people. It's a big room. It's a big room. I've been there too. And big they room. say, okay, if you don't, if you think you've got a valid reason not to be here, they go through a list of, you know, like if you are the primary caretaker of someone, you know, who is special needs or a minor child or something, you, you know, if you, you come approach me, if you have some, you know, like a, a death in the, it's whatever they, if you think you've got a valid excuse to be dismissed, come approach me. And that takes a while. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, there's a reason I, I don't want to be in jury duty, but I was like, this isn't something I would be dismissed over. So I'm just sitting there on the front row trying to make a good impression. Like, I am a willing participant. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving y'all bad attitude. Mm -hmm. So after people come up there and some of them are told, nope, sit down, or you can present it to the judge and see what the judge says. So after they go through all that, whoever's left, we then get divided into groups. Mm -hmm. And I was in the first group called out. I'm like, great, I'm going to... I'm going to be out of here. And what is it, babe? It's about 50 people or this something This one, it was group. either 50 or 70 in right. this first group. Yeah. Another group we saw down the hall from us was only about 20 people. So I guess it just depends on what the situation is. So they have about, it's either 50 or 70 of us. All I know is I was juror number 38. Okay. And so we all march up three, we go up, you know, a couple of things, the escalators were on the outside the courtroom and we just have to wait because the judge and the lawyers are inside the room. And no, nobody knows each other. A few people kind of like, hey, how you doing, huh? And nobody's talking. Mm -hmm. It is dead silent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, while we're waiting here, I'm gonna check emails. Okay. I'm gonna use my time efficiently. Mm -hmm. On the phone? On my phone. Were you supposed to be on the phone at this nobody point? Nobody said a word. Nobody, okay, okay. Nobody okay. said a word about not being able to have your phone. Nobody said a word. Right. So I'm out there with my 
either 49 or 69 other fellow <laughs> citizens, right. my peers, and I'm going through my phone. And I have my volume turned all the way down and my ringer off, right? Because I say, I think I want to look and see what's happening on Instagram this morning. Okay. Seems reasonable. You're Why in a, not? You're just burning time. So as I open my Instagram, what I don't realize is just because I have my phone volume right. off mm -hmm. and my phone volume turned all the way down, mm -hmm. the Instagram app has its volume still at full blast. Yeah. So we're in the hallowed hallway of the Collin County Courthouse. Yes. And blasting out of my cell phone. Change your voice, at please. Full volume. Please change your voice. Is it sounds like the, I have to remember how the beat goes. Nuclear family is a blanking joke. Is that what it was? No, you change your voice though, please. The nuclear family is a blanking joke or scam. You're, and it sounds like it's saying your your family is a effing scam. Full blast, full blast. And I I couldn't scramble fast enough. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm trying to turn the volume down, and everybody busts out laughing. It kind of really broke the ice. Mm -hmm. And some man said, that was the best thing that happened to me all day today. I was like, thank you. It kind of let me off the hook because I just blasted the F-bomb. Not me personally, but my phone did. So we all get, you know, back situated and then we mm. all go march. And I was horrified out. So how many times horrified. have we been in church or been in a if movie If that would have happened in church. Or been somewhere and some Yahoo is over there screwing with their phone and they're playing some. They're like, ah, they do the same thing you did. And but we look and we look over there and judge, yeah, yeah, judge. and we're like, what? What, they are, what are you see, doing? They could see by my horror, and it's just thank God it wasn't in the courtroom. That would have been bad. This so, was in the hallway. So nobody rolled their eyes at you, or no? Okay. Well, no, they all laughed. Everybody laughed because okay. it was horrifying. Okay. So anyway, then we get marched into the courtroom, and I am literally sitting on the third row in the back corner. I'm in the last seat, number thirty-eight, mm -hmm. and so this is a long story. I'm talking a lot. Should I take a breath? <laughs> I'm talking a lot. Well, no, it's okay. It is a long story, but we haven't gotten to the part where Alan gets to participate. No, in it's the okay. It, no, it's fine. I've, I'm past it. I'm over it. We've done 550 of these things now. I, I know what the deal is. But I mean, this, you weren't there, so it's right. You can still comment. No, I understand. I'm, I'm trying. But it's my story to tell. It is your story to tell. But here's the thing: um, every story, eventually, you got to get to the, like the the. the the point. That was part of the point. That was that was humiliation number one. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, here's part number two. Okay, okay. So there's, when you go to, I've gotten to Voir Dyer twice. I don't okay. know if this was necessarily considered Voir Dyer. Uh, kind of a dime to drop a Latin phrase when That's what it's you're not sure that everyone knows what that means. That's the part where they start, when you get down to a certain uh, number of people, the lawyers choose the 12 people that are going to serve on the jury mm -hmm. and a couple of alternate, mm -hmm. alternates, so they have to question you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, remember what Voir Dyer stands for, but anyway. So that's dime number two for those that's of you keeping track. To use Latin on a podcast, a comedy podcast is a dime dropped. That's Alan, number two. that's what it's called. Our live studio audience agrees. Okay, proceed. That's, that's what it's called. Proceed. So as soon as we all sit down, there's the the the, the prosecuting attorneys. There's there's three of them, and the client is sitting behind them. And then on the other side is the defense attorneys. There's two over there, mm -hmm. and immediately they're they're just all looking at us. They're scanning the room. They're looking at people taking notes. Because look, I don't care what people say. You do get judged by the way you look. You get l judged by what you're wearing, how your age, and they're each thinking, and they're looking at body language and facial expressions and how they're dressed. It's like, is this going to be a juror that might, you know, before they even ask us a question. That takes it seriously. They take it, they're, they're making yeah. notes, and I'm like, right, sure they are. I'm sitting in the back corner kind of yeah. like, don't make eye contact with me. No, but yeah. So anyway, then the judge goes through, does anybody have a reason why you don't think you could be in jury duty? And so it's a hand start. Well, after she explains this, the the attorneys on both sides have decided that for this case, they're going to pass out these questionnaires. So they passed out questionnaires to all of us. And they said they're going to review these questions based on your answers. You have to be back here again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., 
and my head and my body just sank. I'm like, oh crap. Mm. Because even if I get dismissed, I won't know until tomorrow, the Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And there's something really cool that I wanted to do on Tuesday. So then she's like, and this trial, if you get picked for jury duty, you're probably going to be here through Wednesday and possibly even Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'm dying. Mm. So then everybody starts, I've got a, I've got a business flight I've already booked and it's, I'm, I'm flying out tomorrow because everybody assumes you're going to get dismissed, right? The majority do. All right, you're dismissed. She was just dismissing people left and right. This full-time college student proved it with her record. You're dismissed. This woman who's a primary caregiver for her um, special needs grandchild, you're dismissed. I cannot stand up and say what my excuse is. It would be too embarrassing. And mm -hmm. I was afraid everybody would laugh at me and the judge would tell me to sit down. So I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But I will get to the rest of that story. Yes. Because <laughs> Alan it's, it's a good time for a break, I think. Alan says it's a good time for a break. Well, we... we but we, I'll tell you, we, when I did get ready to go to, to court that morning... I did not want to go full glam. No. I wanted to look classy. Classy, like I was taking it seriously. Now, today when I went to work, I was tired, but I still wanted a little something, something to look fresh. But, you know, when I'm going out to my girlfriend's birthday, I'm like, let's put it on, right? So, no matter what makeup look I'm going for, what kind of mood I'm trying to present, I am wearing my Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics. You have probably first saw them like I did with that viral tubing mascara on all the social media. It's in that turquoise tube. Love it. Well, all of Thrive Cosmetics beauty products are certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free, clean, skin-loving ingredients, high-performance, trademarked formulas, uncompromised standards. They have thousands of five-star reviews. And it is that viral tubing mascara that I've really fallen in love with, especially lately, because I messed up when I got Botox, I immediately took a nap. That is the hugest no-no you can do in the Botox world. Actually, it was just before I got the huge, same thing. Hugest. And my eyelids puffed up so big that my own eyelashes were like buried under a layer of eyelid fat. The only way you could see my eyelashes was thanks to Thrive Cosmetics Viral Tubing Mascara. Because this stuff lengthens your eyelashes and makes them look like the appearance of false eyelashes, even when you're not wearing those, you know, harmful strips and glues and all that stuff. Thrive Cosmetics saved me from my own eyelid mistake, and I really appreciate that. If you haven't tried any products, start with that, and I swear you're going to be hooked, and you'll be trying Th Thrive Cosmetics. And remember, the name Cause is in the name for a reason, because for every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates goods and products and funds to help community thrive. And I know they support members of the military, which is a cause very close to our hearts. Thrive Cosmetics is luxury beauty that gives back. And right now you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash sandwich. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash sandwich. Get 20% off your first order. There you go, Thrive. Love Thrive Cosmetics. Okay, you're in the uh, Great Hall here. Your phone just went off. You, you, you're you horrified. You're in the room now doing... With the attorneys and the judge. Doing voir dire. And then... Um, now we've been told that we might have yeah, to be there. Right. And so you're starting to panic. I'm, I'm like, oh, God. So then the questionnaire, y'all, this is going to be a juicy We're case. We're going to go into the questionnaire. Really quick, real quickly, because it's interesting. So some of the questions, this is going to be like a sexual harassment or um, inappropriate firing, like you fired without cause or harassment anyway, because the questions on there, like number one question was, are you Republican, Democrat, Independent, or a MAGA supporter? And then there was asking about the Me Too movement. Do you feel that the Me Too movement's gone too far? It was asking about juries awarding financial amounts. Do you think that some of these financial amounts awarded are too excessive, things like that. And then it asks you for your top three favorite celebrities and bottom three least favorite celebrities. So it was like really interesting. It was either going to be a sexual harassment and or political firing case. So it'd be really juicy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're all filling out the questionnaires. And after I filled out mine, the, she said, just hand them to the bailiff and we'll see you tomorrow at nine. So after I finished my, my questionnaire, I went up to the bailiff and I said, excuse me, I said, I really don't want to 
I really want to see if I can get out of jury duty. I said, but it's a really silly reason and I'm too embarrassed to say it in front of the entire room. I said, it's so silly, I don't know what to do. He said, sit down right here. He said, I'm going to go talk to the judge. Did you use that voice? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. Because I, when I am nervous, awkward, panicked, angry, hungry, any emotion, I get real Southern and real nervous and I start getting teary-eyed. And, I, and tears were in my eyes because I was so embarrassed and flustered. So he goes up and he pulls the judge aside and she's, okay, okay. And so he comes back and he says, have a seat. The judge will speak to you when everyone's turned in their questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there. I'm not nervous at this point. Female judge, right? Female judge. Did she have dark hair? She did. I, it's the same judge when I went. Well, they have lots of brunette no, judges. No, it's probably the same one. But you were there for a divorce court. This wasn't a divorce attorney. This was a lawsuit for... Oh, you. this wasn't in the big room. This was in the... It was in the big room. It was on the third floor. But you're in the courtroom now. You're not in that big room. No, I was in the courtroom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe not the same judge. Yeah. So anyway... Sorry. I don't know. Maybe, but... No, it could have been. I don't know. So anyway, um, so after everybody's left, it's just me and the judge said... And, and the bailiff says, or she says, or the, I don't remember, says you may approach the bench. Okay. Well, as I'm approaching the bench... So it's just you, the judge, the bailiff, and the defendant... The head attorney... And the attorneys. For the prosecution and for the defense followed me to the stand. And I'm yes. like, oh, crap. They're going to hear what I have to say. And so she said, I understand that you have a, a matter that you want to discuss. I said, I'm really so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm like, here comes tears in my eyes. Mm. I'm so nervous. I said... Mm. I know this is really silly, and I know this is my duty, and I know I, I, I'm really, I, I don't want to disrespect the court, but there's something really cool that I want to do tomorrow, and if I get picked for jury, if I come back tomorrow morning at 9, I'm never going to be able to make it. This is making me uncomfortable, and I wasn't even there. I said, I really want to go see Dr. Phil oh. and his ribbon-cutting ceremony for his TV studio tomorrow. Well, okay, <laughs> that's good, but that is definitely dime number three, so we're going to write that down. I said... And we have to be there at 1045 in Fort Worth. And this is all the way in McKinney. And I said, there's no way I'll make it in time. <laughs> and the lead defense attorney, he puts his hand over his mouth. And he's looking down. And he's shaking his head. Was he laughing or was he defeated? He was hiding his mouth. And the judge said, I said, I didn't want to say anything in front of the room because I'm afraid everybody would laugh at me. And the judge said, we wouldn't laugh in this courtroom. I was like, ooh. So anyway, she said... So this is tomorrow. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, it's at 1045. I said, there's no way I can make it. And so she said, I'll leave it up to the attorneys. So I look at them and the um, the, the, the defense attorney said, I, I really don't have a, a problem with it, ma'am. And, and to the ma'am, to the judge. And the other, the, the prosecuting lead attorney said she was fine with it too. I said, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I look back at the judge and she said, well, based on the fact that this is a, a very special event for you that cannot be rescheduled, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. And I was like, thank you so much. I promise I'll serve on the next jury. I promise I'll serve. So anyway, I said, thank you, thank you. And I'm, I'm leaving. And just as I'm leaving for the door, the judge says, excuse me, mm -hmm. your voice sounds very mm -hmm. familiar. There we go. There's number, because that's number four. I'm juror number 38, I, and I just said, I'm not going to waste the judge's time. So I'm good. not going to say, because this happens sometimes, like, I don't know. I said, I'm Kelly Raspberry from the radio, and the lead defense attorney said, you're going to hate, I thought that was you, you're going to hate what I say. I was like, I know what you're going to say, but go ahead and say it. She said, I grew up listening to you in the back seat of my mama's car when she'd drive me to school. Five, that's 50 cents. And the judge said... Well, I didn't listen to you in the backseat of my mama's car, she said, but I listened to you as I was driving myself to law school at UNT. Six. 60 cents. Okay, hold <laughs> on. Hold on, lead, babe. This is happening too fast. Then, hold on. <laughs> Golly. Then the lead defense attorney said, well, I was also invited to Dr. Phil's ribbon-cutting ceremony. So the attorney dropped a dime. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, Judge, I said, could you let him off tomorrow, too? <laughs> Don't you, wait a minute. So you're giving the judge yes, advice. I, I said, can you? I didn't give him advice. Oh, my I said, goodness. I said, Judge, can you let him off tomorrow, too? Oh, my goodness. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, it's fine. <laughs> oh, it's no. part of the job. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you didn't tell me all this. Oh, so now you're interested in my story. Oh, you but checked that, out because until it's, now. now it's so awkward. And you rang up. You're just, you've got like a hole in your bank bag. 
They're just falling out of your bank bag. So that's what happened. Babe, hold on. So I got out of jury duty. I was so happy and relieved. Just at the courthouse, you told a judge you were invited to Dr. Phil's event. It's by ribbon cutting ceremony for his new TV network. By Dr. Phil. You said the judge recognized you. Well, she said she recognized me. Then an attorney said, oh yeah, I listened when I was a kid. Yes. Then the judge says, oh yeah, so did I. Yeah. Now, you're leaving out a very convenient detail that you did tell me. I don't remember what it was. And this is kind of a... Because you were telling me to get to the point, and you make me feel bad that I talk too much. So I, my, I left out a, a bunch. That's a story. Because I could have told you about the lovely lady sitting next to me no, who was so excited to be called for jury duty. We, we don't She'd want to never know that. See? Yeah, we don't want to know that. So I don't know which detail I'm leaving out no, 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 because no, now you that, made me all nervous. No, the part with the judge and the attorney, that was the payoff. That was the money shot there. But the part where the judge said she saw your name but didn't recognize it because it was my name. Well, it was Kelly Raspberry Evans. Yes. Because yeah. yeah. I was juror 38. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she said it was Kelly Evans. Well, what happens is she does. She has to like match them up. I don't know if she saw my name or not. <laughs> but she recognized the voice oh, that whimpering gosh. quivering teary that sounding so voice great. so I was really happy because yes we were invited to Dr. Phil's ribbon cutting we ceremony. were we sure were for his new TV network Merritt Street Media Merritt Street Media it's just launched it's the biggest media company launch he said in 30 years? 20 or 30, I don't remember. He said Fox. I can't remember numbers. He said the Fox Network. Remember when Fox first came out and then they yes. started carrying football and that was a huge deal. They yeah. took that from CBS and he said that was the biggest one and then a, a couple of years later then Fox News yes. launched and he said then that was the biggest at the yeah. time. He said this media launch, and they launched yesterday. Right? April 2nd is okay, when they April launched. 2nd. He didn't want to launch on April Fool's Day. Right off the bat, they're in 80 million homes. Right. And more to come. And, you know, they also are streaming on the app, which is how we're watching them right now because they're not available with our provider. That we They're not available as of right now on YouTube TV. But it's coming, so we're streaming. But it's really great. So we get out there to the event. You want to tell, because I've talked so much, you want to talk about getting there and... What happened? Yeah. Um, well, one one kind of fun thing is, and I'm going to whip you with a little EV talk here, because my man Marvis uh, emailed me just today, and he said, have you seen the self-driving on the Tesla? Have you used this? And I'm like, dude, it is amazing. It's like you're chauffeured everywhere. So I meet Kelly at a place that's kind of convenient for her to leave work and me meet up with her, and then we're going to both hop in the in the Tesla and go to the event in Fort Worth. I'm like, babe, you've got to see this. So I plug in the address, and you just hit a button and go. And the car drives itself. And it sounds so, like, trivial. Big deal. Big deal. But, but it you, is really cool. It is pretty cool because it's got to make all these decisions that you make as a human. And you're thinking, ah. Am I trusting it? Ah, is it going to know how to... Like we have, you can override it if it's you can you yeah, can, oh yeah. you can slam on the brakes if you need to. You're but, always in control. But what was interesting to me is when we were pulling out of the parking lot into traffic mm -hmm. that it waited for I mean we were turning left, you know, you know, we were having to cross over traffic to turn left mm -hmm. and it sensed when the coast was clear, mm -hmm. which was really amazing because it was a busy road. Yeah. But in a parking lot, it drove about three miles an hour. Yeah, it, it was so slow in a but parking lot. shouldn't you drive slow in a parking lot? I know, but we were also in an empty parking lot when it did that. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was pretty cool. Tesla released the full self-driving. We used it. Get to the event. Park. No big deal. Um, get into the event. We kind of had a problem finding the door, but we, we got in. And um, uh, you go through this maze of hallways, and it's a, just this huge studio. Big, yeah, you walk around big, a corner, and suddenly, boom. Big, beautiful studio. It's the Dr. Phil set. Yes. And we sat there in the main room. We had really nice seats, and we sat there for it was about a while. 30 minutes. Yeah, they were, they were supposed to, we were supposed to be there at 1045. We got there about 1030, and they were supposed to start at 11. It ran just a few minutes late. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. 
So they had uh, ter- your friend Tara from The Wolf, 99.5 The Wolf, and her co-worker. Ryan. They were kind of like the MCs. MCs doing a little bit, you know. They were doing a teleprompted bit. And, it, and I thought it was cute. They didn't, I don't know if they, they Tara cared was, for it Tara too much. was nervous. Yeah. And Tara was just very nervous and all, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. For so sure. she was just, and then you questioned, did I do a good job? I thought That's they what did, I'm saying. I thought you know? they did a great job. Yeah. But they did the little bit. And then, then a gal came out. She sung, uh, no, no, a, a preacher came out. We said a prayer. He said a rousing prayer. It was a great prayer. And then a, an a opera, singer. opera singer came out. She sang God Bless America. God Bless America. And she sang it so good. She sang it twice. The city's so nice, I named it twice. Yeah, yeah. So she did a great job with that. Mm-hmm. Then we had some dignitaries come out and kind of beat their gums for about 30 seconds. We had some uh, some of them politicians from Austin go out and say a few nice words big about deal. Big deal, yeah. They were talking about the investment that the state is making in a media company. They're, they're wanting it to be like, you know... Hollywood 2.0, I guess. Yeah. You know, no, it was, it was, um, yeah. I'm poking fun at the politics. No, they're, but, they're wanting to make yeah. more movies and, you know, entertainment projects here. So that was good. So he did that. Then the CEO of the entire company came out, said a few words, right? Yes. And then Robin, Mrs. McGraw came out. And then out Mrs. McGraw came out. To do the big introduction of Philip. And then she introduced Philip. And Phil, Dr. Phil came out and give us a little bit, please. Well, I, I, I don't do Dr. Phil very well. Oh, you do it very well. When you put me on the spot, I don't. <laughs> I really I really don't. I'm not being self-deprecating. So Dr. Phil came out, and then they also had uh, Chris Harrison was there with his wife, the former host of The Bachelor. He's going to have a talk show with his wife on the, the Merit Media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Nancy Grace was there. Yeah, she, she's got a show. She came out, and she was sitting in the front row. Um, Dr. Oh, oh, you're building up. Oh, do- well, I was trying to. Oh, Do- Dr. Phil's son was there. Jay. Mm-hmm. And apparently his... His you, wife? Yeah, his wife was there. But you are you know Jay. You're like, you're kind of Oh, friends. yeah, I know Jay. Yeah, you're... It, it, you know Jay? How well... You just said... How well know, do you know you Jay? You just said you know Jay. Does he text you? No. Do you text him? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was looking for a dime eight, but we're, we'll get we'll get there. And then, in this beautiful, beautiful, dark blue suit with a dark blue shirt and a dark blue tie, monotone. My man looking right. My man looking fly. Oh gosh, y'all. The great Stephen Hardy. So, so, sorry, Stephen Harvey came. Wow. Stephen, I was thinking of Hardy. Stephen Harvey came. Wow. <laughs> Stephen Hart. See, I can't even drop a dime on that because I said his name wrong. You did. Steve- I, Al, Alan, <laughs> Al, has developed an overnight crush yes. on Steve Harvey. I've never witnessed anything like it. Well, look, I've always... Uh, you've never... Ever talked about okay. your love first, for Steve first Harvey of all, first until of all. now? Now that Al, oh my, oh. Alan, I keep calling you Al. Alan's met him and they connected. Oh my goodness! They had a conversation, a little one-on-one. Because while I'm, while I'm schmoozing up Doctor Phil, Alan's standing there next to Steve, like, "What are we chop liver?" And so they start talking, well, right? On. So, first of all, let me address what you said. What? And that is that you have a crush on Steve Harvey. I don't. Or deny, Steve Hardy. I don't. As you, I don't deny. Pet name. I don't. Okay, so I messed his name up. You can't even get your husband's name right. I know, Al. Um, so um, he came out. He was looking fly, just looking so nice. So he's and gonna he's gonna have his talk show on. Dr. Yeah, Phil's and he'll Network. have his talk yeah. show on Dr. Phil's Network. But yeah, he was um, sitting in the front row there. Then they took a bunch of pictures. Um, you know, they had everybody come. They had all the employees go up, took a bunch of pictures, a bunch of photo ops. That was pretty cool. And then, Mike Rowe and Bell, Bear oh yeah, Grills. Bear Grylls and Mike Rowe. They Rose, were not yeah. there, but they're going to have shows on Dr. Phil's network as well. So we're yeah. excited about that. And they're having their own morning show. That whole crew was there. Yeah. So then they kind of clear the room of employees. And then it's just kind of like the strap hangers, like Kelly and I, they call us the VIP members, are kind of just hanging around. Remember, we were kind of talking and just hanging around. And then Kelly and I decide, well, I mean, there's... Phil and Steve right there. Well, we never got we food. No, no. No, we, no. We walked up on the stage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We walked up on the stage. We're kind of hanging around like, 
Because we May thought the event was over. We thought it was over, and we're thinking, well, maybe we can talk to Dr. Phil and Steve before we just leave. Just say hi. Just say hello. At which point, we kind of wore out our welcome a little too long. One of the producers came out and said, I'm trying to work. Uh, let's clear the stage. I'm trying to work. I got to get busy because they're I'm, still doing construction. I'm trying to work. He yeah. kept saying that. I'm trying to work. work here. I got to work right here. I got to work here. Well, we found out what it was. He was setting up tables for the. Yeah. For the. Yeah. You know, so and there was. To work. And there was also. I don't know if they were. They weren't Secret Service, but there were U.S. Marshals there. Because there were a lot of, of security of, there. Because of the politicians. Yeah. There was this big burly. And he's the guy that kind of. I was like, oh, I don't want to make him yeah. mad. Let's just get off the stage. This guy, imagine Jason Statham, like bigger, twice his size. Yeah. This guy was big and burly and had a headset, and I'm like, I ain't doing nothing with that guy in the room, okay? So but we were corralled to the back. We where were snacks were provided. We were corralled to the back. Heavy hors d'oeuvres. And this was in a the big studio room where they filmed the news um, shows that looked like they had smaller studios on the second level. It looks like they had a podcast studio. They had all kinds of different... A little robot running around. The robot was a security robot. Yeah, you were telling, you were talking to the man about that extensively. I think the guy thought I was some big VIP or something. Because he comes up to me. Well, you were. Well, he's pitching me this robot. Oh, to use for your business? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I, I do a podcast out of my office. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, but he, he was saying, yeah, this is, you know, the wave of the future. You're not going to have to hire security people anymore. And... You know, this comes out to be about ten bucks an hour with this, uh, you know, this robot. It's like five thousand a month, but you think about it, you don't pay it benefits. It doesn't take vacation. You know, it, it had this like put somebody else out of work. Put somebody else out of work, and it has like this periscope head that goes up, and it can film everything that's yeah. going on. So that and he said it is interesting. He said it has AI. It can like see doors that are open. It can see stuff on the ground. It can see uh, doors that are unlocked or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's pitching me on that. We run over. Um, <laughs> Got some caviar. <clears throat> Dr. Phil, apparently, his favorite snack lately <clears throat> is caviar on ruffles. I'll take I'll take one there. <laughs> I'll say I'll I'll say I'll say that's one. It's caviar on ruffles. Now I first saw this on Real Housewives of New York, the new version of it. Apparently, this is a thing now. And you have people host caviar parties. So it was like, was it a little bit it almost tastes like sour cream and onion dip on top of the chip and then they put a dollop of uh, caviar on it. Wasn't that what it was? And it melted in your mouth. It was amazing. It was I, great. I had one. Yeah. And that was fine. Yeah, Kelly tried one. That was I awesome. I tried one. So it was... And then we had tacos. They had tacos because it was Tuesday. So we, I, I threw down a taco. Now, I decided it was a good idea to eat three chocolate chunk cookies. I, I don't know why you did that. So I was paying for that this morning. Yeah. But whatever. So I did that. I'm back to being Fat Allen, I But guess. then it was time for the tours. So it's time for the tours. So they're like, group two, group two. And Kelly had two on her badge. I had three on my badge, but we just... I, I said, come on. Yeah, I just said. So group two, they take us back into the studio where we were when they were doing the photo ops and Dr. Phil was up there and everybody was in the one room together. And there they are again. They're sitting at these little tables, and you kind of feel well, like... Well, it's just three of them this it time. It was Dr. Phil's wife. It was Robin. Robin. It was Dr. Phil, and it was Steve. Yes. Al's lover in his head. Al Mack? Alan's Oh, lover. okay, okay. Did I call you Al again? Yeah, you did. It's all right. <laughs> I called Steve Harvey Steve, Steve Hardy. <laughs> Why do I keep calling you Al tonight? I, I don't know. I have no idea. That's fine. Whatever. Um, so then we... You know I, I know you, right? Yeah, I think so. So Kelly and I are getting the feeling that they're lining us up to go do a meet and greet. Yeah, we didn't really. It did. We we, we had no minute. idea. It took us a minute to put two and two together. Yeah. Like, oh, we're gonna have a little one on one time. One they on had, one. They had autograph cards and everything. They were just set up and they were giving everybody a moment. So we were group two. So one group one was just finishing up when we walked up. Yeah. So the the first was was Robin, Robin McGraw. And uh, we went up to her, and she knows Kelly. She recognized Kelly. Well, they used to live just down the street from our studio before they relocated to California. <laughs> in Las Colinas. Well, that's how I know her. <laughs> you just, how is that a John drop when you just said she knows oh, Kelly, and I was explaining how. Write that one down. That's, that doesn't count. Lit Alan said 
she knows you. And I said, yes, and I explained how. Okay. so she, I explained how. So Phil. Before Dr. Phil <laughs> got his TV show with uh -huh, Oprah, uh -huh. he used to be a jury coach or something like that, teaching you how to testify. Like these big, huge cases when you've got millions and millions of dollars on the line. You can't just be expected to get up there and testify and not be tripped up. So he coached Oprah on her beef, where her trial with the beef farmers. So anyway, they lived just up the street from us in Las Colinas, and I don't remember how exactly it was through Kid, I'd imagine, that we met Dr. Phil, and through that connection, I met Robin. Yeah. Was I invited to their home? Yes. That was in Las Colinas. Now, if you want to say that's a dime drop, fine. But you ask me. That's eleven. Um, okay. And then they moved to California. So we, awesome. That was awesome content. Um, I just, we just can't keep them off for tonight. But, um, so we go up to Robin. Robin, of course, recognizes Kelly. And she's like, hey, Kelly, you look so good. You know, and they're hugging and everything. And I'm just kind of chopped liver. Just kind of like, oh, you know. And Kelly finally re I, uh, remembers I, that. That's not finally. Kel Kelly finally remembers that Al is behind it, I, her. That was not finally. I did that every time we went up to somebody. I said, and you have you met my husband, Alan? I did that every time. <laughs> so I met Robin, and she was very, very sweet. Very, very, very nice. And she's going to have her own talk show, too. She, she is. just has not launched that yet. And, and while Kelly... Kelly turned away for just a second to talk to somebody or get out of somebody's way or something. Robin looked over at me and she said, she said, you're a lucky guy. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And the, but then Robin McGrath said, she's really lucky too. What was she basing that on? <laughs> that face right there? <laughs> I gotta die. I gotta <laughs> die. Ever. Whatever. I'm about to drop one. Let me go get a glass of Merlot with Robin. <laughs> that's my only. That's my only my second dime. I had caviar and Robin McGraw okay. said that you were lucky. Okay. Okay. So very sweet. She was very sweet. So we, did she say she'd have to have me over to her house? Maybe. Come. <laughs> hey, they're real people. They're just regular people that happen to be famous. They're very, very nice. They are. They're no, very no, nice. I, I'm, I'm, and they're not. I'm you giddy. Know, I'm giddy with they excitement. Went, they, they were from Texans, and they went to California, and they're still Texans, and they just came back. They are. So Texans, they're just very, sure. very nice. So then we moved over to Doctor Phil. And we moved to Doctor Phil, and he was in. Y'all know I love Doctor <laughs> Phil. And he was in the middle, and uh, you know Kelly was in front of me, of course, and she said hi. To, have you met my husband, Alan Do Evans? <laughs> Dr. Phil recognized Kelly, which was really cool, and uh, we said hello and chatted for a, a moment. It, it was it was a little bit about him moving back to Texas. We were asking him, um, you know, are you going to keep your place in California? Are you going to move here full time? He's like, no, I'm, I'm, I've moved back to Texas. So Dr. Phil said, we've, we've moved, we've relocated back to Texas, and... Um, we talked a little bit about his son, who lives in the Austin area, I think Jay does. Or he has friends in the Austin area. Because we were talking about Austin a little his bit. His son Jay is really good friends with Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. Right, right. So we, we talked about that just a second. And uh, it seemed like we were kind of starting to bog the line down. Oh, we were bogging the line down yeah. bad. Because somebody behind us, like, when I finally left Robin to go to Phil, the man just switched and said, I just wanted to say hello. It's just like, I just want I just wanted to say hello so I can get the hell out of here because we were bogging down the line. But this, but you know how Alan's usually like rushing me to get through a story. Alan wasn't rushing me to get through no. this. Alan was like, no. take our sweet time. Oh, just, we were we were those oh, people. Oh, posted up. We like, were those oh, people. Oh, a fat man at a hot wings convention. We were a whole. Oh. Hundred percent. We and were, and we proud of it. I wouldn't say proud of it, but we admit it. I was proud of it. Now here is a kind of awkward, a little bit of an awkward. Just for a flash of a second, I felt awkward, but then I I feel like I saved the day. So you were talking to Phil. Sorry, you were talking to Doctor Phil. Doctor Phil. And I was behind you, and I, I think you were yet to introduce me, which is fine. I'm just saying. I was still... I introduced I was you still within waiting. 10 seconds. I was still waiting to be introduced. So I was, there was nobody going around me to see Steve. So he's sitting right there. Like, just waiting. And he was just <laughs> sitting there by himself. Like... 
just yeah. like. So then I, I was like, well, God, I can't just let Steve Harvey sit there by himself, like just like sitting there. So while you were talking to Phil, I engage. This is your moment. This was my big moment. I'm like, Steve, <laughs> what's up, man? I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. And he was could not be any nicer. He was so nice, warm, engaging, and... I was just, I didn't, I was just saying whatever came to my, to mind. I said. What, you feel like an idiot? It's yeah. Like, I was, blah, 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 I was like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey. um, I was like, oh, we're so glad to be here. You know, my wife, she had jury duty yesterday, but she got out of it. Right. I told Dr. Phil that. He thought that was funny. Well, I told Steve I told that. that. So that's how I launched into it. I'm like, yeah, we're lucky we're here because my wife, she, she actually skipped out of jury duty. Or not skipped. I said, she got out of jury duty yesterday. She, he's like, really? And I said, yeah. She said that. There was this really big once in a lifetime event that she was invited to, and she asked the judge and the attorneys, and they said, Cool, you can go. He goes, Wow, that is awesome. He goes, Where was that? And I said, uh, Collin County. And he goes, Collin County. He goes, I know Collin County. <laughs> and he said, The McKinney. He used to live here. He said, The McKinney Courthouse. And I said, Yeah. He goes, I spent a lot of time up at that McKinney Courthouse. Yeah, he got divorced here. Yeah. And I said, Really? Yeah. I said, so did I. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. we kind of we kind of bonded at that moment. I thought I thought right then, I thought we were kind of tight. Yeah. Just and for a what? second. And then what happened? And then Tara was behind me, and she kind of jumped in front of me, oh, because she thought I was. Are you calling out Tara for cops walking? Yes. Yes. <gasps> yes. 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 Because then I felt like, well, I need to divert my attention from Steve to Phil. So what did Tara say? She just literally came in and like stuck her hand and said, "Hi, Steve Harvey." She, yeah, and it was fine. But she, she and what's her coworker's name? Ryan. Ryan. She and Ryan jumped around me to talk to Steve. They just skipped Doctor Phil. Because I was talking to. Because you were talking to Doctor. And Phil. they know not to interfere with that. Right. So I was talking. They ain't scared of you. So I would no. I guess <laughs> not. So I was talking to Steve, and I didn't think I was finished talking to Steve. I could have talked to Steve for like freaking like thirty minutes. We talked probably fifteen minutes though. And then she jumped around. But another thing we talked about, when Kelly came over, like after we said goodbye to Dr. Phil and thank you and congratulations and everything. Who said he's going to text me? He wants going to text okay. me. Okay, golly. I'm having a hard number. time keeping up. He said something about me calling and I said, Dr. Phil, I don't think I have your number. He's like, I have yours. I'll text you. Okay, that's number 12. And he, he also <laughs> said, Dr. Phil also said in that same conversation, Kelly said, I think I have your number. You have Dr. Phil's number. No, I don't. Oh, he, he said, said, I'll text you. Right. And, and Kelly said, oh, but I'll text you back, but I won't abuse your phone number. I said, I won't abuse it. And he looked like, oh, come on. Like, Kelly, come on. We're tight. You don't need to worry about that. That's right. That's the biggest dime, and that's number 13. I didn't drop that. You dropped it. You were up to a dollar thirty. You dropped that. I didn't drop that so then kelly and i both you cannot drop stuff and give it to me sure i can so kelly and i then both move over to steve tara and ryan had moved on and kelly and steve and i are now the three of us are talking gosh i'm just off the top of my head real quick i, I remember us talking about he was i was we were asking him what all he's working on he said well i do i do uh, family, family feud in atlanta he said, then I do Celebrity Family Feud in L.A. And then he said, I do my radio show here. In Dallas. He said, I'm going to start doing my TV show here. And Kelly said, well, are you, are you going to buy a house here? And he goes, no, I, I don't think I'm going to buy a house here. He said, I live in Abu Dhabi. He lives majority of the year in Abu Dhabi. He says, I spend most of my time overseas. And we're like, Abu Dhabi, huh? That's... He's like, you know why? He said... It's beautiful over there. He said, there's no crime. He said, there is zero crime in Abu Dhabi. And he said, the last time there was a crime committed there was, he said, 30 years ago, when somebody stole a car from a member of the royal family. Like, if you're yeah. going to steal a car, you stole from the royal family. Yeah. And you know what the consequences are, probably, for something like that. So he said, there's no crime over there. Yeah. And so he loves he it. He seemed to really like that. He, that's the part he kept saying. He's like, there's yeah. no crime there. There's no crime And there. look what's happening here, because there's no consequences here yeah. anymore. Well, so anyway, it was really nice, but um, I, you know, I, I know Steve. He, he He's from the Dallas area. He lived here for a long time, and so he and Kid Craddock... We're both radio guys. 
And so immediately, and I've met Steve before, but it's been years and years and years. So I know, I knew he wouldn't remember me. So I went with, hi, I'm Kelly Raspberry. I worked with Kid Craddock. And, you know, who, um, but I said, we still do the show in his honor. He was like, really? He was just really surprised that, you know, his kid's been dead 11 years this year. He was like, really? He was just really he surprised would, he by that. Yeah, he could not he was believe fascinated it. About because that. that's unheard of. No, There's no other show where the host dies and you keep the host's name. But he was also like, he was like, wow, that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because he said, you know, I put my name, That's he said, that's why I put my name on everything I do. Because when I'm gone, you mm -hmm. know, he's, I said, yeah, it'd be really expensive for people to change it, you know. But it was just really nice. He was really sweet. And... I think, oh, and then when we were done with our little tour talking to Steve, we finally let somebody else have a chance. Well, we hobbed him and for Alan and I a good were like, 15 minutes. We're good. We've, we've done yeah. what we need to do. Yeah. And, you know, so we were like, well, we, it was supposed to end at 1, and it was one fifteen at this point. And I said, well, do you want to just, you know, let's just kind of peace out. And it's like, that's fine. So we were kind of so turned around that some very nice gentleman led us to where the exit was. And as we're walking out into the front lobby, just sitting there just at a sitting table there, just by, herself by herself is Nancy Grace. I was like, next to the exit. I was like, what are you doing here? I did a double take. I'm like, Nancy. Yeah, we're like, why are you here? <laughs> and because we just assumed everybody left. Well, then somebody with a clipboard jumped up. So what happened was there were stations that you were supposed to go to to meet all the personalities. And Alan and I just went to station number one. We assumed that was it, and we were leaving, but Nancy was like, stop number seven. So we missed meeting all the celebrities except for Nancy Grace. And she's like, yeah, I'm wondering why like nobody is coming out here. And it's like, well, that's partially our fault because we're the jerks that are holding up the line back there. But we were in group two. Group one hadn't even been by at that point. So anyway, we had a very lovely little visit with Nancy Grace, and we assured her other people were on the way. Her uh, husband took a photo of us. From about 16 feet in the air. Her husband was about 6'5", <laughs> and then he put his hands above his head. You know, because we want that good angle. But Nancy's sitting down, and right. she's short anyway. She's right. very tiny. Right. And then Alan and I, you know, big people. Oh. And so we're towering over this yes. short woman sitting in a little chair, we look gargantuan, but we posted the picture anyway because she's Nancy Grace. So then we left. We got our gift bags filled with all the Merritt Street and Dr. Phil merch. Freaking out of my Dr. Phil coffee mug. I love it. I love Steve Got Harvey. his book. I love Dr. Phil. Map. I love Steve Harvey. You, I've, you I've, drunk the Kool-Aid. I have you? always watched Family Feud. I've always watched that show. You can't say I'm like a bandwagon Steve Harvey. No, I'm fan. saying you've drunk the whole Dr. Phil, Rob, oh, and Steve Harvey. You're in. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because they were nice people. That's why. That's why. I, I, I don't know. Just, you know, I, we, you, we've been around some you know, people in the, in the public eye. Wait. Wait, let me write that down. Is Alan dropping another no, dime? No, I'm just saying, like, when you meet somebody that you see on in the media and on TV a lot, you form opinions about somebody that you, you know, you don't really know, and you don't really know somebody after 10 or 15 minutes of speaking with them, but you do feel when somebody is engaged, when somebody feels like they're interested, when someone feel, when you, when someone makes you feel like, this isn't a job. I'm here because this is a big deal, and I'm happy that you're here. That's the feeling I got. I don't From know. Everyone, Nancy Grace acted like we we just saw each other yesterday at church. Didn't she act like it was that? just like we knew her? She all just started just, talking, and she's like, just it was just the most strange thing. But was, she was so friendly. Oh, it was nice. great. It was really great. It was a fun day. It was, it was great. So um, Merritt Street Media, if y'all want to look that up, download the app. We're just you know we're not gonna. I mean, we're not going to sit here and pimp Dr. Phil any more than we already have. <laughs> but it was really great. We're excited. No, it was fun. It, it was a lot of fun. We, we were both, when we left, we were both saying how fun it was and how excited we were for all those people because this is a quite a endeavor. And I think Phil said, he goes, you know, doing a radio show like I've done or a, a show like I've done before where you're taping, you know, 60 minutes one day a week. He said, that's one thing. 
But well, you do it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're launching a company where we got to have twenty four seven programming. Mm-hmm. You know, and he said that that's a really hard thing to do for a brand yeah. new company. And he's not just doing his talk show; he's doing like in depth investigations and things like that's going on and you know it's just going to be really interesting it's going to be different it's going to be a different take on the news he said it's not politically driven none of it's politically driven it's just you know it's not just we're giving you the news we're also telling you why what's happening you know explaining what's happening and kind of breaking it down and just a common sense approach to things i'm excited about it all right, this was a fun podcast guys and was um, it it was I, longer than we wanted it to be i'll, t- I'll tell you what Listener, you're, you'll probably have to go back because I made some notes about all the dimes that were dropped. I know I missed some, but quickly review, very quickly, Kelly Di- Kelly's dimes that she dropped. Our live studio audience says she dropped a oh dollar forty worth of dimes, 14 dimes. That's the most that's ever been dropped in a well, podcast. Well, I think a lot of those can be attributed to you. Some of them I wrote down were, ooh, she's hot. Kelly threw no, down... she said it was gorgeous. Kelly threw down Latin in conversation. That's the name of it. She told a judge that she was invited to Dr. Phil. Yeah, because I had to get a jury duty. The judge recognizes Kelly. She did. The attorney listens to Kelly. Yep. The judge also listens to Kelly. Well, she did in college. Kelly Kelly worked somewhere where she used to... Uh, they the, the office was right next to where Dr. Phil and his wife lived. I still work in that office. She said, uh, Nancy Grace, why are you here? What's that? It's a dime. It's not a da- dime. Um, not a damn dime. <laughs> and there's 12 and 13, but I don't know what those were, so I'll have to go back and listen myself. Those weren't dimes. Alan had exactly two dimes. That's a lie. I ate caviar off a lace chip. And you bonded with Steve Harvey. That's not a dime. And Yeah, and then there was one more I forgot. See? So who won that? Well, obviously I did, based on your... What is the word? Parameters. Is that the word I was looking for? I'll give you a parameter. Yeah. Go back to what Robin said, how lucky I am. She said you're lucky too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> anyway, when, I think that's when, enough. When you weren't looking. <laughs> yeah, because I missed it all together, so you could be lying. Anyway. All right, babe. Well, this was fun. You got anything else? No. I'm gonna As say- you say, every mm-hmm. week I've talked enough. I did, I've never said that. Hey, I gave, I gave you the full show at the, the second half. And you even had stuff we didn't even get to get to. I know. The thing I took the boys to. We can do that next time. We knew. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll save that. Save it. We'll save that for next time. Um, because that, that was kind of fun. But anyway. All right, babe. Well, you got nothing else? I'm about to yawn. All right. Well, that means I'm done, y'all. I'm tired. It's been a long few days. My adrenaline just crashed. Oh, we didn't talk about Easter. Yeah, we did. The beginning of the podcast. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Alan. We went to church. <laughs> Very beginning of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, we, we did a little bit. <laughs> okay. I was passed a note by one of our producers, and I guess it was bad information. It said what? We didn't talk about Easter. Well, they must have tuned in late. <laughs> All right. That was the first thing we did. Well, I love you desperately. Love you. I love our listeners desperately. Love y'all. I love Merit Media desperately. Dr. Phil McGraw. I love the producer that even showed up late. Steve, That's fine. Steve Harvey, Robin McGraw, Chris Harrison, Bear Grylls, all of them. It's going to be Mike Rowe. It's going to be pretty fun. It'll be a fun network to watch. But I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good. Have a good sandwich. Bye!